next door. But they're going to have to sit in a room like this and all those transgressions that they've been, you know, hauling Lisa out of her car and they're going to have, it's just, just a simple deal, guys. It shouldn't be real hard to explain to them. That's not protecting her freedom. And they're going to have to, you know, get an update, an update or an education before they go out on the streets that, that these people have a right to travel and explain all that stuff. But now she gets stopped. And let's say they detained her or somebody, you know, and Paige got arrested. You send some rangers to wherever they've got them in jail and say, I'm sorry, they're one of ours. We're here to collect them. Now, that'll work when we have our international recognition and enforcement and funding and all that stuff. We'll have a tremendous uh, enforcement. And it's not to pick a fight with them, but, you know, you know that letters were sent or about to be sent to all of the sheriffs. It's a good thing we didn't. It was a little premature. Me and Hal and Billy Faust and who else went with us? We, we met with Sheriff Mack, spent four and a half hours with the guy. He never heard about some of the stuff we did. But where the guys in Colorado didn't have such a good experience, we did. But Sheriff Mack's not in office anymore. That's why it was easy. But he was very amenable to listening to what we had to talk about. But when we get there, that'll be an aggressive program. Across the country, there'll be 90,000. Rangers. Now that sounds like a lot, but I did some research. How many law enforcement officers there are in the United States? And some of them are hidden in agencies and stuff, and they have authority you never gave them. And I, I can't remember the number, but it's, I want to say it's like 9 million. It's crazy. I have it on a spreadsheet and I pulled it in for a stat. But uh, anyway, yeah, I got a spreadsheet for you. <laughs> so, <laughs> That's what I've been up to for the last couple of months, and I believe we're done. And it's just, uh, the last thing I did was send all the print margins so if they could print a couple copies. Because the, the nation budget has, it only has two states on it at the very end of tabs like this. It has uh, Arizona and, and California, and they pull forward for just an estimate of what the other states are going to need. And then all the rest are tab budget, uh, a cabinet budget templates for all the various cabinet members and, and, and small, they're, they're all small, the average probably there is $10 million, but they need a staff to uh, do some things. Great job. Any questions? I'm a chairman for the Armed Services Committee as well, and uh, we just reviewed our budget for the Department of Defense um, and wanted to give you this to general numbers. I'm not going to go into extensive explanation as Jim. Um, right now, the Department of Defense, in a parallel phase, meaning that the de facto is running and the Republic is running at the same time, um, we have some minimal equipment that we have, and it's mostly air support um, and equipment. So as you see here, Obviously, the salaries, the uh, administration, and things like that here, you'll see just as far as costs. But here, compared to, uh, we're looking at $2.2 billion. Uh, we have to purchase airplanes. Uh, we're going to have three locations um, in the Republic, East Coast, um, somewhere in the Midwest, Salinas. and the West Coast. Salinas, Kansas. Not, it's not for sure yet. It's, just, it's a good idea. Yeah. Coast yeah. and yeah, we're, um, so uh, we reviewed this the other day um, and approved that, um, but just wanted to share that with you and, and how the De Department of Defense of the Republic is going to be supporting the Rangers um, with their support and, and also flying a lot of the representatives to where they need to go and meet with people or whatever that may be. Um, but again, um, this is very minimal um, and this is in the parallel phase. Um, but just want to share that with you just briefly. Thank you. Well, he says that so that there's no confusion. There's about 83 air, airplanes. Most of them are small. There's one big airplane to, to fly the president around. And maybe uh, the mostly the consideration there is, is uh, over, over the pond. Okay. The idea, the reason I wanted to say this, this isn't to fly let regis, um, legislators around like Nancy Pelosi. <laughs> the, the bigger part of the, what's going to, the air support is going to be is for the Ranger program. 
getting rangers around and, and, and so forth for our uh, security than, than anything else. But there are a couple of small, there's a one big airplane, most of these are trying to get used ones, and that's a whole other exercise. We happen to have a, a couple of really good pilots, and um, they gave me some costs, and, and you know, did, put some hangers and all this stuff. But the idea is the legislators are going to get on common carriers and stuff, just so you know. Okay, uh, old business. That that concludes that in Arizona Safety Association. Robert McCoy and old business, do you have anything to see here? Okay. Sorry it took so long, but it took two months to get all that done. <laughs> small groups 
and then uh, and then those various groups, those leaders would then elect somebody at the county position. Those county people would then elect a state representative. But the point is, is that we've all got stuff of various types. And if we took some of that stuff, just a little bit of it, and we pulled that together at central locations, that way, if Joe over here, his house gets destroyed, flash flood, tornado, dust storm, whatever, it doesn't matter. Joe's house over here gets destroyed, he just lost everything. <coughs> but by us pooling a certain amount of stuff together, and with Joe kicking into the kitty too, Joe now has some of his stuff someplace else. So he hasn't lost everything. Because Joe's got his eggs not all in one basket. And Fred and Al and Grace and everybody else. So going under that, that way not only do we have some of our stuff in other locations, but it puts us in a good position to help out other people. Um, FEMA's not always going to be around. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because then you've got to put up with all their other stuff. Well, uh, yeah, first couple of... <laughs> Yeah, I keep forgetting that's back there. <laughs> um, but uh, by, by, by organizing all of this stuff together, it puts us in a position to where no matter what happens, we can take care of ourselves and each other. Um, and by having these small organizations at the ground level up, then whatever stuff we... that that we start to collect up together is close by. But then as, as we progress in our organization, what I see happening as far as this plan is, as it sets, is that uh, we have a certain amount of things stored with our local group. Then we have a certain amount of other things stored at the county level, and then a certain amount of other things stored at the state level. And, uh, yeah, medical supplies, food, clothes, camping equipment, tools, you know, fuel, all these things that you're going to need in an emergency situation, an evacuation. I mean, you know, Palo Verde can go up any time. That would be, well, pretty bad. <laughs> um, and... But the whole thing is, is that there is there's lots of areas that you can go. This, Arizona is a pretty big state, and there's a lot of diverse terrain. There's lots of places you can go to get away from various things if you have to. And by organizing everybody in the state through these groups, having this multi-layered stuff in there, then We'll, we'll be able to have places picked out. Um, uh, there's also been some discussion about uh, putting together some pools of people and uh, doing real estate co-ops, I think that was the term. So that way we in the Republic can purchase blocks of land that we can then have to do things, you know, like with the Ranger program that we can start training exercises or we can just have areas where we can store things that is private land that nobody else can touch. So we don't have to worry about, well, gee whiz, uh, if some kind of collapse happens and the government shuts down stuff, well, then like uh, storage lockers, it uh, may be news to some folks, but uh, all those under the federal, uh, uh, the FEMA thing, uh, if there's a national emergency, those are all those storage units are locked down. Wow. Uh, everything in it is confiscated. Really? Yep. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so storage lockers, not such a good idea. <laughs> but if we have private land 
that's our land. Nobody can tell us we can't go to our land. Um, and so what I was thinking is that if we have smaller plots within each county, and then maybe a couple of larger plots at the state level, then when it comes to like ranger training, we'll have places way before we get all this funding, we'll already have places to do this stuff. Not to mention that if we want to go hunting or camping, we'll have places that the de facto can't tell us, nope, you can't be here. This is the wrong time of year. Nope, you can't do that there because we said so. It's private property. We can do as we will. And uh, But as I said, too, as a good place to store things, in the event we have to evacuate an area, say, hey, there's right there, we own it, it's our spot. Then we go there. Um, and, uh, yeah, exactly. Think like the country. <laughs> um, but uh, also, in order to organize not just different equipment and supplies, but in, it, uh, in an attempt to organize the people, every one of us have different skills. All of us. I'm a hammer and a bird. More so. So, what I thought would be a good idea, too, is to make up some sort of a questionnaire or whatever for people to write down all of their job skills, hobbies, anything like that, that could be useful in things, so that way once we have these small community organizations set up and whatnot, that whoever's in charge of that would have a copy of what everybody knows how to do. So if something goes south, then, then all these various leaders, they already know what the skill sets are of everybody in that group. And so if people show up to deal with the issue, okay, uh, Fred, I need you to go over here and do this because you got the most experience with that. Joe, I need you to handle this. And this way, you don't have a mob of people showing up. That's the wrong time to figure out who knows what. <laughs> Because something bad's already happened and the clock is ticking. Um, so that's the time when you need to have people that know what everybody else knows. So that way you can say, okay, Fred, Al, Frank, Jim, Cindy, y'all know this. So here's stuff, get busy on it. Um, and we should be able to do a very rapid response to anything that can happen. And, uh, and then I thought the best way to go about choosing leaders would be to use the go type of format to where people don't say, well, hey, I want to do this. Because um, that may not necessarily be the best thing. People that can think on their feet, people that are used to making hard decisions, those are the type of people that need to be in charge of these groups because some tough decisions are going to need to be made. Um, but, uh, let's see, have I forgotten anything about it? Oh, I also clarify a couple things. Okay. Um, Robert and I were kind of working on this for a while now, and um, this uh, idea um, a safety association program like this uh, came from Edwin Vieira, who wrote a book called Homeland Security. Um, and it's an interesting uh, book. Uh, he's he's a, a constitutional scholar that studied all types of things and touched on this, and this is kind of the origins of it. Um, but uh, one of the things that uh, Robert brought up that um, I don't know if you guys remember um, the GO process that we had, where you got into groups and interviewed everybody and asked certain questions. And that's what he was mentioning that you know we pick our leaders that way. Um, we did think that was a successful model, and it looked like it worked really well with picking people. And so we use that. Um, but uh, the most important thing is this is a bottom-up structure, and we wanted to keep it that way. Um, just to clarify, you know, there's gonna be a local leader, 
maybe let's say for example in Chandler and the East Valley people, they might have a local group there, um, and they decide, you know what, this leader, uh, hey, uh, we're gonna have, you know, maybe a section in his garage to keep a couple of our things there. Not everything, because I think you should have some things at home, but have a little bit at that place so you have something there, just in case something happens at home. Um, and so there'll be some the, a local group there, the Hobble Plan. Um, Robert and several other people that are well knowledge about Arizona and terrain will pick a very good location if necessary. You have that location if you need to pull that card. Um, at the county level, there'll be a county leader. So Maricopa County, for example, will have a county leader um, that will coordinate with these leaders, uh, other sub leaders. And if there's a natural disaster or something like that, there's an opportunity that you know maybe there's nothing that happens with, with us. But we can go help out maybe another community, um, and it does provide an option of uh, you know an opportunity to promote us. A lot of people won't know who we are. And there's these people coming in here volunteering, helping. That we're the republic. You know, so there's be opportunities like that that might come. Um, and then at the state level, we have to decide whether that would be a government official or just somebody from the assembly. That would be that state contact for the safety association. Um, at every level. Equipment would be stored, um, and, and the thing is, with that system like that, all your stuff or all the things aren't in one place. It's distributed, and that is an important um, strategy. Um, and Robert, maybe you can expand on it, but that's always a good idea to do that. Um, but anyway, uh, we thought this would be an idea that maybe we could start working on. Um, I know a lot of people don't have any emergency plans, and some people do, um, but this, in the times that we're in, um, this is just something that we should maybe have a place, just just in case. I don't know if Robert, you have anything else to add? Well, I think I pretty much kind of covered the basis of it, but um, like I said, I figured that this should be something that should be brought before the assembly to be basically ratified by the people of the state because it's it's going to be our plan and we're going to be the ones instituting it, and everybody would be involved at some level or another in you know, carrying it out, but not only that, in, in making sure that, that uh, if something do, does go wrong, you know, um, that we look out for one another. I mean, it's our country, and we're Americans, and Americans can do anything. Up there. Yes, sir. I'd like to make two comments. One, you mentioned that uh, self storage facilities could be closed down by FEMA. That may be true with uh, national corporate chains, but it is not necessarily true with locally, privately owned facilities. Right. Number two, the, uh, uh, the communications systems that you listed. I would suggest some alternate communication system because it's recently been proved that a nation can pull the plug on communications uh, on all those things that you had listed. Well, those were just some. Well, I understand. Just that. some suggestions I that I come up with. I understand that, but, but we need to devise an alternate form of communication, whether it be uh, sign language, smoke signals, I don't care. Pigeons? Pigeons, yeah. Well, most yeah. independent. Well, that's why I wanted to bring this before the assembly for everybody to have a say in it. I mean, just because I made up a plan doesn't mean we even have to use mine. I was just asked to make one up. So I said, okay, well, here's, here's a plan. Um, whether or not we use it or any part of it, uh, yeah, it's... It's it's up to everybody. Very good. Yes, sir. There are historically two excellent blueprints that you can draw from. Both of them from all the two. Can you speak up a little bit? Yeah, yes. I'm old. I said historically there are two excellent blueprints that you can draw from for this, both of which had the same principle in mind. In the United States, we call civil defense. It's a homegrown process. 
They were very conscious back in those days about constitutional compliance, people keeping their freedom and all that sort of thing. Not so anymore. But in an, in an older time, there already was a program where they invited people to participate voluntarily. That's one. The other one was on a paramilitary basis was in Britain where they were a little closer to the war. It was called Home Guard. You know, they put together little militias of people who practice in the military, but also by extension. Yeah, there was an aspect of that, but it was a civil defense. It was also community related. Those are two excellent blueprints that are, are already a matter of history, historical, and they worked extremely well in a different time. Yeah, excellent. Um, also on with the blueprint, I was thinking about the Mormon Church, which Jeff's talked a lot about. One of the things that they do is they, they have these Ziploc bags, and they, they make hygiene kits out of them, and then send them to different parts of the world. But in that Ziploc bag, there's, I think, a bar of soap, a washcloth, a toothbrush, toothpaste. Um, I don't remember what else. They do different bags. The hygiene is one of them. And just to get us started, um, I'd like to make a motion for all of us next time to, and I'm totally okay with a friendly amendment, this is just what came to my mind, to bring toiletry items, um, toothpaste, toothbrush, washcloth, bar soap, I don't know, whatever, and put it on that table, or we can have a table outside, and then somebody can collect it next time, and we'll figure out what to do from there, but at least this way we're getting started. If you guys want to do something different than hygiene, whatever, I'm okay with that. If you'd rather do tuna fish or, I don't know, whatever. Anyway, um, that's my motion. Anybody want to second it? I'll second it. You have a second? No. What? No, I don't have a question. Okay. No, Open it for discussion. Open for discussion. Go ahead. I have a couple of cases of bar soap I'll bring. Okay. Yeah. Sounds like a good idea. Yeah, I've got all yes, sir. You, you were talking about putting together a list of everybody's skill sets and maybe supplies and different things that we have stored or are willing to to share with with the group. Is there any way of getting that uh, just a form or, or something automated so that we can all type that up and send it in so it's kind of right, secure, password protected, you know, so that we can. You know, share with the group. Here's here's my skill set. Here's here's the tools that I have to to lend, to share, to work with. Point of order. Is that is that uh, me to the wait, uh, the, the we're to right now on good point. We're in discussion yeah. right now on the motion. Oh, okay. I don't know if it's related. Sorry. Um, my question in discussion regarding the motion is.